In 2006, I watched a TED talk that changed my life. The title of the talk was Hans Rosling Shows the Best Stats You've Ever Seen. And they were the best stats I had ever seen. In only 18 minutes, Hans Rosling convinced me that everything I knew about development was wrong. And he did it all with data. Today, I hope I can show you some Cambodian data in a completely new way and inspire you to use that data in your decision making. But before I get to the data, I think it's important to explain why I'm doing this presentation. And the best way to do that is with a story. There was once a street in rural Cambodia where three families lived. The first family were the poorest family. They lived on less than a dollar a day in this thatch hut with no toilet. The second family were the middle income family. They lived on one to two dollars per day. They had this nice tin roof and a bicycle sitting out the front. The third family were the richest family. They lived on three to ten dollars per day, or sometimes even more than that. They had a big wooden house with a TV and a toilet and a motorbike. Now, one day, a well-meaning NGO visited this street. They had received funding from an international donor to give $100 grants to every HIV positive woman living in this area. The consultant who designed this program had assumed that every HIV positive woman would definitely, absolutely be living in the poorest households. But actually, that's completely untrue. Because if you search Google for HIV prevalence in Cambodia by wealth, the very first search result you get, number one, is this study. And it clearly shows that the percentage of women with HIV is almost twice as high in the richest households compared to the poorest households. So what did this actually mean for our three families? Well, the NGO worker came along to distribute the grants. And much to their amazement, they discovered the HIV positive woman on this street lives in the richest household. So, you know, she got 100 bucks, which she used to buy a pig in order to make even more money. And the woman in the poorest household said, what the hell is going on here? Why is she getting $100 when we are clearly the poorest, absolute poorest family on this street. I have an idea. Maybe we should all get HIV so that we can have $100 too. <laughs> now, the story that I've just described is not a hypothetical. It's actually a real program in Cambodia right now. And this whole completely absurd situation could have been avoided if the consultant spent 15 minutes on Google to look at the relevant data. And unfortunately, it's not just this program. There are quite a lot of programs in Cambodia where people with exceptionally good intentions do not bother to look at any of the relevant data, even the stuff that's easily available. And as a result, a lot of money is wasted. Now, I'm not saying that it's always easy to find the data that you need, or even to understand what it means. But it's often a lot easier than you think. So today, I'm going to show you some real Cambodian data. If you are planning to design a development program in Cambodia, the first type of data that you need to look at is data on the context. And in the case of Cambodia, historical data is really quite important. Now, luckily for us, we have this amazing program called Gapminder that can reduce the whole of recent Cambodian history into a 60-second animation. Now, on a Gapminder chart, each of these bubbles represents one country in the world. And the size of the bubble 
is the size of the country's population. So, this one up here, this is the United States. This really big red one, this is China. Here we have India. And this little one here is Cambodia. Okay. Now today, on the x-axis down here, I've put income per person per year. And you can see in the poorest countries, it's only $400 here. But all the way up here in the richest countries, like the United States, $40,000. And on the y-axis, I've put life expectancy. And you can see down here in these countries, it's only 45 years. But up here at the top, it's 85 years. Now, the amazing thing about Gapminder is that we can actually go back in time. So I am going to take the world all the way back to 1940. Here we go. Okay, and in 1940, Cambodia is in roughly the same position as Thailand and Vietnam. All three are together. But what happened between 1940 and today? Now I am going to press the play button if everybody is ready. Here we go. Okay, so Cambodia got off to a bit of a slow start, but you can see here it starts developing, it keeps developing. It actually keeps developing even in the Vietnam War. Everything's going really well, and then suddenly, here comes the Khmer Rouge, and it literally goes backwards. In comes Vietnam, going really well in the 1980s, and then the 1990s, the UNTAC period, it actually sits and does nothing. It stagnates. And then suddenly, in the last decade, look, it's off. It's off and heading towards the rest of the world. And if you look at that, it is right back on track in the last decade, which is really very, very amazing, given the decades that came before it. It's truly remarkable what happened. But you know, although it's gone very well in the last decade, it's not all good news. Cambodia still faces a lot of challenging problems. But not all of those problems are actually the same size. And if you want to do something about one of the problems, it's really important that you understand the size of the problem first. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to compare the size of five different problems in Cambodia. And the first one we're going to start with is entertainment workers under 18 years. So basically, children working in karaoke bars and nightclubs and restaurants. And you could see there could be 10 to 20,000 children working in these areas, which is 0.001% of the total Cambodian population. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking, surely this is just an estimate. The real number of children has got to be much higher than that. And that could be true. But in a minute, you're going to see why it's still important to look at estimates, even if they're not 100% accurate. So now, let's compare the size of this problem to some other problems. This is the total number of people infected with HIV in Cambodia. This is the total number of people with disabilities in Cambodia. This is the total number of people without enough food to eat in Cambodia. You can see it's getting really big now. And this is the total number of people without a proper toilet in Cambodia. It is a full 64% of the entire population. And for comparison, this is the total Cambodian population. So you can very clearly see that problems in Cambodia actually come in a whole range of different sizes. And if we go back here to children working in entertainment venues, even if the real number of children was two or even three or even five times this estimate, it still would be a relatively small number of people compared to the total Cambodian population. Now, just because a problem only affects a small number of people, that doesn't mean it's not important. 
Obviously, children working in the entertainment industry and HIV are important problems. But you do need to use a different strategy depending on the size of the problem. So let me give you an example. A really big mass media campaign could be an excellent way to reach this huge number of people here, because mass media is good at that. But it might not make a lot of sense to spend a whole lot of development money on a huge mass media campaign if you only need to reach a very small number of people. You could end up wasting an awful lot of money. So it's really important that you look at this data before you decide what strategy you're going to use. The other thing that you really need to remember is that national averages can be quite deceptive. So here I'm showing you a chart with the percentage of the Cambodian population living below the national poverty line, which is around 61 cents per day, although it varies depending on if you're in an urban or a rural area. But you know, 26% is actually totally misleading. Because if I break it down by province, you can see that in Phnom Penh, actually only 0.1% of the population lives below the national poverty line. But up here in the north, more than 40%. And if I show you the total number of people, in Phnom Penh, maybe it's 4,000 people living below the national poverty line. But here in Kampong Cham, it's more than 400,000. So it's really important that you look at local data, not just national averages when you design your programs. What I've covered so far is how you can use data to understand the size of a problem. But there's also a lot of data that can help you understand what to do about a problem. Some of this data can be quite technical, but there are a few websites, like GiveWell, that summarize it in an easy to understand format. So what I want you to do now is to imagine that you are going to donate your own money to a development program in your community. Which program should you choose? Which one is really going to make a difference? If we look at the available data on program effectiveness, vaccination campaigns are absolutely guaranteed to make a difference. They have a lot of data to back them up. They are very effective. By comparison, if we look at the data on cash transfer programs, some of it's really promising, but there's actually a lot we don't know about them. So does it really make sense to put your money into a big program? No, it probably makes sense to put your money into a pilot first so you can see if the program actually works before investing in a big, big program. Distributing textbooks to schools. Actually, the data shows that this doesn't really work, even though it's quite popular among many NGOs. So it probably doesn't make sense to put your money into this type of program either. And microcredit, there's actually some data that shows that microcredit could harm the poorest people, although it could be very beneficial for the middle-income families. So maybe, depending on who you want to help, it might not make sense to put your money into this one. As well as looking at data on the effectiveness of a program, you also have to look at data on the cost of a program, because money is not unlimited. So now I want you to imagine that you are an international donor and you have $100,000 to put into one of these four healthcare programs. Okay? All of the programs are effective. So which one should you actually choose? Imagine that you put your $100,000 first into breast cancer treatment. If you add up all of the years of life that you could save across all of the women in the breast cancer program, for $100,000, you could actually only save 28 years of life. That's 
28 years across every woman in the program, not 28 years for each woman in the program. And if you work out how much that costs per year, that's more than $3,500 for every year of life that you save. That's pretty cheap compared to a Lexus, but it's still pretty expensive. But you know, if you put the same $100,000 into a random breath testing program in Cambodia to prevent drink driving accidents, you could actually save 74 years of life for the same price. And if you put it into measles vaccination, you could save 405 years of life. But if you put it into vitamin A fortification for exactly the same price, you could save 4,000 years of people's lives. That is, an, that is amazing. That is only $25 for every year of someone's life that you save. That is cheaper than a family meal at Pizza Company. It is an absolute bargain. So, the next time that you're making decisions about a development program in Cambodia, please have a look at the available data. Try looking at the data in different ways, using some of the tools I've shown you today. If no data exists, collect some. Doing a survey is not that hard, as long as you have someone who knows what they're doing, and there are plenty of those people available in Cambodia. When you run your program, measure the results. And please, please, please share those results with other people, because the more data we all have, the better the decisions we're going to be able to make. Thank you.